Oh, it's it's a beautiful city, and uh, yeah, definitely that. How did you get into Foss? How did you discover it is the way? Yeah, Foss is the way. Uh, well, I knew that Foss is the way even before uh, this whole Rockstar identity started, but it really uh, Foss is what fueled Rockstar identity in a sense. And uh, really, there wouldn't be a rock star if it weren't FOSS, if it weren't projects like BTC Pay Server and other FOSS projects in Bitcoin ecosystem, especially BTC Pay Server. Because uh, through FOSS projects, you everything you do is open and public. And it's available to anyone without any fees, any costs. And that's what really supercharges all your contributions, whether it's code, whether it's documentation, to to be available to anyone around the globe. Uh, and that's that's really what happened with my code uh, on BTC Pay Server. Uh, when once BTC Pay Server started taking off and becoming so popular, uh, a lot of people were running BTC Pay Server and then they would ask for hey you know can btc pay server do this can btc pay server um uh, has have this feature and that's where i would come in and say yeah, absolutely i would sit down open yeah code then open a pr merge pr and uh, through every pr through every uh, you know code change that i made to btc pay servers like it strengthened the Rockstar identity and connected it with more people. And that's that's how even like what happened later was added like with Strike and people wouldn't know of Rockstar if it weren't for FOSS. There wouldn't be Rockstar without FOSS and no BTC Pay server without Rockstar, right? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, maybe there would be BTC Pay server, but it wouldn't be as rockstar like without rockstar right and uh especially it's funny uh, nicholas now has that uh nickname of emperor so it is like emperor and rockstar uh you know contributing to btc pay server and uh i i really think part of small part of the success was our dynamics on, on twitter and interacting on twitter because btc pay server was one of like the first application layer projects on top of Bitcoin, and it was really popular on Twitter back in the day where when you didn't have like other Bitcoin projects as prominently represented on Twitter. So then those interactions between me and Nicholas, yeah, were, were a big part of it because I created a Twitter account originally just to retweet whatever he would publish on BTC Pay server handle and then to interact with him on on Twitter because yeah if, if people watching this don't follow Nicholas on Twitter you absolutely should for hot takes on Tokyo real estate market or when he gets upset about latest like woke trend or whatever like it's it's so great when Frenchmen you know making jokes in English posts on Twitter so and it even creates memes so yeah Nicholas Dorier on Twitter you should absolutely follow it. FOSS projects have a soul and they live through the code. How could other projects do that? Yeah, I mean, what you're saying, uh, every FOSS project has its own soul and it's like how that soul evolves. It always follows the individual souls of contributors. And that's why also you have, uh, like, some, I, I, I look at, the numbers and majority of FOSS projects are still like single person contributing to FOSS code base. And you have situations where whoever created a FOSS project doesn't want to scale it beyond them. Because as soon as you add a second, third, fourth person, they, the soul of the project changes as a result of all the individual souls that are joining the project. Um, and my feelings on that, I mean, I, all that I want to see is like whoever is the, whoever is, whoever are the end users of the 
project, like they continue feeling good, like feeling same, hopefully, like they always felt good about the project. So that that continues indefinitely and that audiences for the FOSS projects grow. Uh, yeah, that, that's what I focus on. And in BTC Pay Server, that, that is something I like, you know, spend a lot of time on ever since I joined Nicholas is because um, before and even after BTC Pay Server, like uh, every startup I was part of, like for me, culture of the project and, you know, uh, the way project is received in the community of users and even non-users, like that's critical. So you want to maintain that. And uh, to apply it with on BTC Pay Server, when you say uh, shirts, uh, tags, you know, all the merch we do, hats, that's, that's so great that people you know, join the project in a sense, become part of the projects and project and are representing the project. And that's what I really see where our contributions as coders, like really get realized. Like, sure, uh, you coded something, is it now used? And how does it, um, how does it really end up being perceived through the wider audience and the culture. So BTC Pay Server, I, uh, I, I just hope we keep growing and still keep having the great culture that we have because as you say, like person wearing a shirt, it's great. And I think it's also like that part is a lot about logo because this B is such a great OPSEC B for Bitcoin, so yeah. What do you think about FOSS versus Academia? Why so many shitcoins are involved in university? That, that is quite interesting, yeah, how much shitcoining there is with universities and how every professor like joins a specific blockchain and then propagates it. Because, yeah, Academia, it, <laughs> decentralization of Academia only exists in a sense that like you have universities around the world but the whole point of universities, like in the main draw to them, is is that they're exclusionary. Is like there is some kind of entry process that you need to satisfy, and only then you get the access to to yeah lectures and professors, and you can participate. Um, on the other hand, like when I look at FOSS, as I said, to me FOSS is that uh, if academia is like science. FOSS is applied science. And then you have like, you know, kind of papers, works, theory here. And over here you have really like practice. That is what you're saying and, and doing and coding and contributing. Does it work in the real world or no? And if, if it doesn't work, yeah, your PR is going to be rejected. No one will use your code. So, yeah. It's interesting that FOSS projects in that sense can be universities of tomorrow because the biggest benefit, if you ask me, when it comes to universities is that building of your network. And then, sure, like someone that is professor at university has a wealth of life experiences and specific knowledge that they hopefully are good enough to, to like impart on their students. In FOSS, you, you do have those same concepts. Like I always say to young uh, contributors that are looking to FOSS projects, it's just like one of the most important criteria for you when it comes to joining the FOSS project should be, are you inspired by whoever is the person that created the project or people on the project? And then if, if you are, that is a FOSS project that you should join. If, especially if you're not an accomplished developer or you don't have big ego, <laughs> you shouldn't start your FOSS project. You should rather see which one to join because it's, it's so much better for your own development. So uh, definitely. And then development of network. Hey, Marcin, BTC Pay Server has connected you and me also, and uh, it's a great thing. 
that I want for everyone. Why do companies that are purely false sometimes face intellectual property disputes? <laughs> well, it's mostly because of the people behind those companies. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's just that. But I, I still think open source kind of makes even those disputes easier because when you look at the scale of of the wars on, on like intellectual property and copyrights and this and that like we're talking about armies of lawyers you know millions like tens of millions of dollars burned and compared to that you know like disagreements in FOSS area is like way way smaller and that that's good because what we really want is the future where uh, there is less conflict, less costly confrontations. Rather, it's all about technology providing space for individuals to, to collaborate in more you know, robust, scalable, peaceful way. And that's where I again think like if you have FOSS projects, you can go into like, oh, what is the license? Did this person take this from this person? In the end, like there will always be conflicts. What's important is that scale of those conflicts doesn't like is is order of magnitude less than what it was in the past. What do you think about Lugano becoming a Bitcoin adoption hub? I uh, I love the fact that uh, city of Lugano like that Tether and has spent so much like resources to to enable Bitcoin payments. I love that. I just wish they didn't have their like token. So, yeah. <laughs> Don't publish this. No, no, no. Uh, wait until I leave then. <laughs> then we'll see. Did you have the opportunity to buy something with Bitcoin in Lugano? Yes, I paid my uh, bar tab yesterday. How to be beautiful. <laughs> I mean, no, it's it's a beautiful city, and uh, yeah, definitely that. <laughs>